Salutations and welcome to Basic Public Speaking. I am your professor Chrissy Thomas and this video is the video discussing the requirements for our final, final speech, which is our final main speech, final speech period, and it's a persuasive speech. I'd like to apologize in advance that this video is coming to you a little bit later than I intended. I've been dealing with head cold sinuses all week and just haven't had much of a voice, but it's kind of back today so I figured let's do this video. All right, so your final speech is a persuasive speech. Let's break down once again what a persuasive speech is. A persuasive speech is a speech where you're getting your audience to start or stop an action. But what also falls under the persuasive speech umbrella? Well, it's getting your listeners or your audience to align to agree with, to go with, to fall, I don't want to say fall, to understand in what you want. So it's getting them to align with your beliefs, your values, or getting them to think along the same route as you. So a lot of, if you think of political rally speeches, those are persuasive speeches. They're targeted for their audiences to agree with and go with what they are saying. Now, a much more casual, aloof way of a persuasive speech is think of commercials or ads for, you know, be it toys or restaurants, any of that falls underneath the persuasive speech as well because they're trying to entice you to try them or go to them because they are the best. They do this with slogans, they do this with testimonies, whatever the case may be, all that falls under the persuasive speech. So I don't want you to go into this project thinking a persuasive speech has to be this like political, hot ticket um, subject. And it very well can be. And if that's your choice, that's your choice. I just want, I just don't want you to think you're you are grounded to just doing a political charged persuasive speech. Your persuasive speech can also fall into what, you know, whose pizza is the better pizza or who made the best Batman. And gosh knows there are plenty of <laughs> Batman to choose from. If you go all the way to Adam West, all the way up to the newest one of Robert Pattinson. So maybe you could talk about the best Batman, or perhaps you want to talk about why book three of the Harry Potter series is the best book. Or perhaps you want to tell me about the best Doctor Who, or perhaps you want to talk about why this makeup brand is superior to another makeup brand, or why brand of tires is more superior to another tires. The purpose of a persuasive speech is just to get your audience to align with what you believe, what you think, and what you feel, and to do that, I'm outside, so I'm kind of battling the wind. To do that for the purpose of our final speech is you have your opinion and you have your ideas, but you're going to back that with at least two in-speech citations. Now, these citations can be statistics or quotes or blurbs or um, graphs. You know, there are many different ways you can do in-speech citations, but you have to have at least two for this speech. So that's your technical, one of your technical, technical aspects of this speech is that there are two in-text citations. Now we did that with our third tell me story speech. So of course, since there are citations, you are required a work cited to be attached to your outline. So technical aspects of this speech are as follows. You, it must be at least three minutes in length is required an outline and a work cited because the work cited goes along with the citations. Now your in speech quotes or citations can come from the same source, but they need to be two separate ones. You can't just do like a run on one. So it's gotta be, so if you get them from the same journal or you get them from the same web page or the same speaker, you gotta have at least two. So I hope that makes sense. So again, the technical requirements for this last speech is this must be at least three minutes in length Two in-speech citations, quotes, blurbs, bits that are go with what you are 
trying to persuade us with, or trying to persuade me with, I guess, since I'm your target audience for this. And a outline, doesn't have to be a crazy outline, but an outline nonetheless with a work cited attached to it. I will have a home for all this. I'm getting this uploaded. You have the last two weeks of this course. So that's the last full week of April and the that first full week of May to complete this. Our course ends on May 6th. Your speech is due by May 6th at noon. So again, persuasive speeches are speeches that are created to start or stop an action. But also you're wanting to guide or align the audience with what you believe or what you value or what you think or you want to guide them or align them in the direction that you're in. So it can be speeches such as why, <coughs> excuse me, you shouldn't smoke. Or maybe you want to talk, persuade the audience on why a school day should, instead of starting at eight o'clock in the morning, perhaps the school day should start at 10. What's the benefits of the school day starting later in the day? Or perhaps you want to do a rally on why there should be more extracurricular activities in the school system. Like your school may have a lot of sports or they may have quite a few clubs, but maybe maybe you think they need more. What's the benefits of there being more extracurricular? All that falls there. And you know, hot ticket items as well. You don't have to do political, politically charged. And when I say politically charged, like gun control or abortion laws, all those falls under the political hot ticket items. I just don't want you to think that the speech is, has to be that because when people think persuasive speeches, they usually think along those terms and lines. And it's really not that. You can have fun with that. You can tell me who has the best french fries out of fast food. Or perhaps you want to tell me who has the better chicken. Is it KFC? Is it Chick-fil-A? Is it Popeyes? Is it um, Bojangles? I'm trying to think of other chicken places. But, you know, all that falls under. Or perhaps you want to tell me why Nike is superior to Adidas. Or perhaps you want to talk to me about a particular clothing line. Or maybe you want to talk about why one should recycle. So there's really a large... You have a lot to choose from when it comes to persuasive speeches. Again, the technical requirements for this very final speech is three minutes of length an outline with MLA citation work cited, two in speech citations that back up what you think, what you believe. They must come from accredited sources. Don't pull from Wikipedia. I know it's, anybody can edit Wikipedia. So pull from accredited sources if you're pulling from online and whatnot, and the world is open. So it's really not hard to find accredited sources to go along with what you believe. Um, work cited, time arrangement two in speech citations. Okay, yeah. So like I said, your your in speech citations, quotes, blurbs can come from the same source, but you just need to have two separate ones. So it can come from the same journal or it can come from the same website or particular speaker or magazine or organization. You just need to have two separate ones. It can't be the exact same blurb from someone used numerous times. So two separate. All right, folks. If you have any questions or concerns, please get to me as soon as possible. Reach out to me. We'll get through this. We'll talk about it. I'm allotting two weeks to work on this final speech. I will not accept any work past May 6th at noon. Any missing work whatsoever. I will not accept anything past noon on May 6th. So that gives you plenty of time. And if for some reason you are missing work or you're missing speeches, get those into me as soon as possible. Anyway, folks, I hope that you have an amazing week. Bye.